Welcome to the Write Your Own Story podcast. I'm your host, Betsy Leonidas, and the founder of the Write Your Own Story company. Girl, I can tell you right now, you are definitely enough. Here we value service, sisterhood, connection, laughter, and that super genuine, keep it real, tell you like it is honesty. My hope is at the end of each episode, you realize you can do whatever it is you dream about and that you are not alone with what you struggle with. I'm hoping that you are snapping and clapping and hell yes in your way through each one of these episodes. So if this tracks with you, let's get started. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome everyone back to the Write Your Own Story podcast. I am your host, Betsy Leonidas, and I'm so thrilled today to be here with Caitlin Eno. Caitlin, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So Caitlin is the author of Communication is More Than Words, which is this adorable children's book. I'm going to quickly start us off um, reading the meet the author and a message from the author, because I think they're both so give a great picture of who you are and why you wrote the book. And then we're just going to dive right in here. (laughs) Okay. So Caitlin is an author, advocate, wife, student, and a mom to a wonderful little boy. She loves to spend her time outdoors, exploring parks and nature with her family. In her free time, Kaylin enjoys writing, crocheting, reading books, watching movies, and completing DIY projects. Same girl. I love DIY. (laughs) And I don't know how to crochet, so you're going to have to teach me. With this book, Kaylin hopes to inspire others to love what makes them unique, especially in the way they communicate. Her son, who has, ooh, teach me how to pronounce this. Polymicrogyria. Okay. I'm glad. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. Well, I'm glad you did that. Um, and autism um, and was the inspiration for this book. So her message to the readers is, hello, readers. I went searching for a children's book for my son that explained all the different ways people can communicate without verbal language. I looked everywhere and I couldn't find one. So as a mom who of a child who is non-speaking, this did not sit right with me. So I decided to write one myself. I like... I hope you give yourself enough credit for that. That's huge. That's amazing. Um, So this is your first published book and plan to continue to write many more. No matter how you communicate, I want you to know that you are heard. I'm going to get emotional. (laughs) You're incredibly special. And I believe that you can be anything you want to be. Everyone is different in one way or another. Absolutely. I literally, I don't know why I shaved my legs. I have full goosebumps. (laughs) And you are capable of doing amazing things. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I hope you feel seen in this book. And I hope you embrace your differences and are proud of who you are. That's so, ugh, look at me. I'm like, don't cry, Betsy. I know, I'm like, <laughs> right. Oh, God, I'm that very was... emotional. So if I oh, cry. Same. Oh, fine. We can sorry. cry together. Yay. <laughs> Team cry. Okay. That sounds really lovely. Um, okay. So tell us more about your son and what life is like. And I just want to hear all about him. Yeah. So if I look down, I've got notes. Yeah. So bring just... <laughs> the girl, do your notes. You can read verbatim. However you want to no, do this. We are here to tell your story. My son is six years old. Uh-huh. His name is Bryson. Awesome. He's like. The definition of joy. Oh, I always like, if you don't know Bryson, it's like, that's your loss because he's like incredible. Oh, I Um, love that. He's always smiling. He doesn't know a stranger. Hmm. You know, we take walks after school around just our cul-de-sac and it should take probably 20 minutes, but it ends up taking like an hour (laughs) because like everybody comes out and it's like, hi, Bryson, how was your day at school? And it's like, we got to talk to you. And then the next house. It's like a celebrity status. Yeah. Yeah. And there's. (laughs) Most of our neighborhood is elderly. Yeah. And so, you know, oh, of course, they, they just love they it. They love him. Oh. So we're gone for forever on our 20, should be 20 minute walk. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, he's a sweetheart. Yeah. Oh, he sounds so, yeah. so, so special. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about his diagnosis, what yeah. that means, how that shows up for him? Yeah. He was um, born with a brain malformation okay. called polymicrogyria. Okay. I don't even know if I say that correctly, but we're going with That's it. That's what I'm going with. It sounds very official to me. <laughs> right. And so, um, basically your brain looks like a walnut. Okay. That's how it was explained to me at least. Yeah, sure. And it's got like mo- multiple folds and stuff on the sides. Okay. Um, but if you have polymicrogyria or PMG for okay. sure, okay. um, the folds are like really small yeah. and close together and there's too many of them. So basically, like when you're getting all these signals, it's not going to the right place. Gotcha. So it's like a developmental um, yes. condition. My son has apraxia, or my, not my son, excuse me, my nephew has okay. apraxia. Um, and so it's like a misfiring of, it's not like, so that affects his speech mm-hmm. as well. And it's not like, um, 
he needs to go to speech therapy to like learn to move the muscles correctly. Right. Sometimes I can walk in the room and he's high aunt Betsy. And sometimes I walk in the room and it just misfires yeah. from thought to communication. Is it right. similar to that where like the neurons firing are sort of being yeah, it's but interrupted? It's, it's not just with speech. It can be with like moving your body or gotcha. You know. So he has it on the right side of his brain. Okay. So it affects the left side of his body. Yes. So when he was a baby, like his hand would be in a fist and he physically couldn't open it. Yeah. It, I guess it does take kind of. Yeah, you got to think I, about it, yeah, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, and, yeah. And so we had to, like, go to a therapist and, like, work on stretching out the muscles. Oh, sure. be in a fist 24-7. Oh, gosh, and they'd contract, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so he was slow to walk. Yeah. Um, he still isn't really talking much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, and then he also has autism. Yes. Okay. So tell me, like, what was that diagnosis process like? Because I feel like there are so many parents out there. You know, we all mm -hmm. are watching our babies develop like hawks you know, for anyone who kind of has their mom intuition firing right. right now, like, could you walk through what that process was like and um, sort of any words of advice for people who are going through the diagnosis process? Right. Well, they came at different times. He yeah. wasn't diagnosed at the same time. Okay. Um, you know, I had him kind of young. I was 21. Yeah. So I didn't know right. what I was doing. I, I mean, still, I mean, I still don't know what I'm doing. I had no idea what I was doing. And <laughs> yeah. so I think my older sister, Shauna, kind of pointed out like, hey, like, he should be doing these developmental milestones and he's not like, yeah. just something to pay attention. Like yeah. sisterly, I'm helping you out. Aww. And then, you know, it would be more stuff. Um, and eventually I think it was his 18 month. No, 13 month. He went to the, I don't even remember mom brain. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. But you're like, he, but he's still a baby. Around, yeah. Still a baby. Around yeah. 13 months to yeah. 18 months. Yeah. I don't remember. All good. No idea. Went to the pediatrician you know, they asked all these questions and if the answer was no, 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 mm -hmm. everything was like, no. And then I was like, uh-oh, like yeah. that probably can't be good. Right. Um, he had a brain scan, an MRI. Did they get to that right away? They I were mean, like, pretty much. Yeah. Interesting. Well, okay. They were, they sent him to children's for a neurologist. Yeah. And then they immediately did an MRI and that's when mm -hmm. they could see the, his brain malformation. It physically looks different on an MRI. Yeah. Oh gosh. And having to put your baby in the MRI machine. Yeah. It's just, so Adeline, my daughter had a very severe brain injury, um, but she was an infant. So like they literally, the technology was amazing. I could sw I could like feed her and swaddle her up. Well, she wasn't eating at the time, but like she was on IV nutrition, but um, like it was, they used um, the tube for like a knee MRI and it was kind of like hmm. experimental at the time, but so she wasn't in that giant machine, yeah. but I can't imagine your baby is, you know, anywhere from a year to 18 months. Right. So he's wiggly now. That must well, have been so hard. I would imagine. Yeah. And even that's a lot to like yeah. watch your kiddo be put under. Yeah. Ugh, let alone going in for a brain scan. That's got to be really scary. Yeah, it was scary. And then the neurologist actually called me himself and I was like, uh oh. Right. When you get one from not Ooh. their nurse, but like when they call you. Yep. And he told me about the polymicrogyria and I was hopping on Google. After yeah. That phone call. Right. You're like, thank you. But what? Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And was Google absolutely terrifying or were you like, okay, uh, this makes sense or half and half. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh my gosh. Okay. So that was when he was, you know, like 18 months or less. And then how did you discover the autism component? And do they sometimes run? Is this like a common correlation or no? No. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Let's phone I a friend. Let's ask an art. I, I don't know why. Phone I'm, a friend. I, don't know. I, I did not give you any warning about how much of a medical junkie I no, am. I, After everything with Adeline, I'm like, I have a thousand questions I about the medical part. I think a lot of people with PMG uh -huh. have autism, but not a lot of people with autism have PMG. That makes total sense. It's like that was the, the rectangle way. and square issue. Yeah. Yeah. That so was that's... the perfect way to explain it. Okay. Nailed yeah. it. There, yeah. there you go. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was around, again, somewhere between 18 months to two years old. Uh -huh. No idea. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, again, went to the pediatrician. Uh -huh. We were seeing all the delays. He wasn't walking. He still wasn't talking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but now there's more things. And we had attributed those to, okay, that was his PMG, uh -huh. right? That yeah. makes sense. But now he's flapping his hands and he's under the ceiling light and he was spinning and he wouldn't get dizzy. He'd be spinning for forever. And I was like, he's going to Right. Throw up, fall down. Fall, right. Know, and he wouldn't. And I was like, oh, interesting. You know, it's interesting. And there's just little things like that. Yeah. Um, a lot of repetition. Mm. Um, so more than those things weren't really PMG related. I see. Uh, and then they, you know, had us go see one of the 
developmental pediatricians at Cincinnati Children's and they ended up diagnosing him with autism. Yeah. And I guess they do it in levels. Yeah. It's a spectrum, right? It's like a spectrum. But yeah, yeah, when you go there, they give you like level one, two or three. Uh Uh-huh. Level one being like less yeah. severe. I I don't even, I don't like using these terms, but you know, it just helps. Right. I guess. Um, no, I understand. Cause you're explaining sort of like the depth of the yeah. condition, but without, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's a spectrum, it can, whatever, but yeah. he's on more level three, more okay. of the severe end. Yeah. Um, and he's yeah six and a half. He's still nonverbal. Technically he can mm-hmm. say probably 10 words or less. Yeah. Um, but the 10 words he can say are very meaningful ones. I bet. So, <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Oh, that sounds, I mean, that sounds like a really, just to like pause and to honor what you've been through. Like, I know that it's like, I know that he fills you with nothing but love and yeah. joy, but as a parent to have to just go through that diagnosis process and just to not know until, you know, sitting that in that uncomfortable waiting mm-hmm. to figure out what's going on. Oh yeah. It's just the, it's hard. For the autism one, they make you wait like a month too. And it's like, you're just sitting here. Right. Wait, cause you know, once you get that diagnosis, there's different therapies mm. that can help. Yeah. And you're just kind of sitting around waiting. Oh my gosh. So no, it's stressful. Huh? That sounds really stressful. So for all the other parents out there who are in the thick of it, you're not mm-hmm. alone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you've come out the other side, you've got some information, you've got this boy who's the most popular kid in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so tell me about why you wrote the book. What happened? What's going on? Yeah. So around the time he was three and a half or four, uh, we went to the park mm-hmm. and he was playing. Of course, he's still not talking at this point. Yeah. Um, a little girl came up to him and she was like, you want to play, you know, trying to, they make instant friends, right? Most kids do. And he's just staring at her smiling and she's, what's your favorite color? What's your name? And he's again, just staring at her. And then she just kind of flipped and was like, well, you're just so weird. You can't even talk to me. Why would I want to play with you? And like, was making fun of him. And I get she's a little girl, right? You know, and then she kind of ran off and he was very upset. Oh, sweet boy. I know. It broke my heart. And it's like, where's your mom? You know what I mean? Right. (laughs) Let's address this. Right. Right. And so, you know, we went home that night and I was telling him like, that was really his first bullying experience. Yeah. And I was telling him like, you know, kids just don't understand. Like I'll, I'll think of some way to help them understand. Right. Yeah. So after I put him to bed, I'm. Did that comfort him? I think so. Yeah. I think he was, he was just upset. I'm, yeah. He I doesn't would be. understand. You know. Okay. Gotcha. It, I felt bad for him. How do you it, not? It, it breaks your heart. heart. Yeah. And I, it, yeah, it broke my heart. Oh, uh, it would either send me into mom rage or just total devastation or maybe like a I little bit. I really of know what to do. Totally. That was his first time. And it's like, bullied. And, yeah. and as a parent, you're like, I know what I do. And then you're in the moment. You're like, I don't know what to do. Right. And she was so little too. Yeah. So it's like, he doesn't right. really know mm-hmm. better right now. I don't know. Right. Doesn't I, make it okay. But... I agree. But yes, I mean, to give her some grace, she is yeah. little, but you're right. Yeah. People can, you can have empathy, but their behavior can still not be okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so and then you were like, I'm going to do something about this. Right. And so I was Googling like, well, I had an idea. I was like, okay, what if I find a book on Amazon, wherever mm-hmm. that would explain different forms of communication methods. And I could buy a bunch of these books. And every time he starts a new grade at school, I think he was in preschool at the time. Yeah. Um, I can donate a book to his teacher for her to read on the first day. That's and so then maybe nice. his, you know, his peers could know like, oh, that's like Bryson, you know, yeah. and they would know how to play with him and whatnot. Well, I couldn't find a book like that. And I had searched for hours and I was like, this can't be, yeah. there has to be a book like this out there. And there wasn't. Yeah. And so then I remembered a quote. So I'm a Pinterest girl. Same girl, same. Oh, Pinterest. of course you are with your DIY. I love Pinterest. So yeah. I, so I found a Pinterest quote and it said, if you don't find the book you want on the shelf, then write it yourself. <clears throat> I think that goes for more than just physically writing a book, right? Yeah. But I had saved that in a, one of my quote folder. Yeah, you know, totally. Course. Everyone's got a quote <laughs> folder. Got a, a quote, quote board. Folder. Yeah. 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 And uh-huh. so I was like, I guess I'm writing a book. And oh. I had never done anything like that before. Oh, my gosh. And I was in the middle of my college semester at UC. Oh. And we were in the middle of buying a house. Oh, my and I was gosh. Tr- and I was like, eh, why not? You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. What's another thing? What's another thing? Yeah. So how did you even know where to start to write a book? Well, if, yeah, I guess... I joined a Facebook group and it was about self-publishing your own book. Smart. And I just asked all the questions. Yeah. And I was up there all the time with another question and other authors who had self-published would answer. And I just kind of got my information from there. Yeah. God. And that's such a great example of like, 
the power of community. Yeah. And um, like, I think one of the themes that I continue to see on this show is that people learn something or experience something, do something about it and find such um, purpose in their life by then turning around and helping others mm -hmm. to do the same for what they've been through. Yeah. And then just like, that makes me think of like the community and, and of course what you do with your book. Okay. So you like find an illustrator, you find a publisher or well, you got to write the book first. Right? Yeah, like that, right. everyone always has kind of like, oh, you know, I, I'm trying to research. I'm trying to figure out an illustrator and how to edit. The first thing you gotta do is just sit down and right. write the thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah, I wrote the book. Um, I thought the illustrator part would be like the best, most fun part. Right. Yeah, totally. It's very stressful. Really? <laughs> well, because it's hard like to find one that you just feel, I mean, that's, People judge books by their cover, even yeah. though you don't want them to. Yeah. And so finding mm. someone that has your vision, you know, yeah. I'm not an artist. Yeah. But, but you certainly someone, had vision. Yeah. I yeah. have vision still. Um, so that was difficult. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But uh, good for you for not giving up until you found the right mix. Well, and what I did, I couldn't find one online, like, or they were super expensive. Yeah. Again, being self-published, you're paying for it yourself. Yep. So I was like, oh, I can't afford that. Well, I went through my son's bookshelf and I was like, oh, you know, what better way? Yes. Is, and I was looking through all the books. I found an illustrator. Her name is Sarah Dane. Uh huh. And she was fresh out of college. I think she had only done like one or two books yeah. before. Super sweet. I reached out to her with her information on the back of her, um, yeah. her about the illustrator page. Yeah. Uh -huh. I re reached out on Instagram, told her about my book. And she was down for it. So it was great. That is so freaking resourceful. That's know, really like, impressive. Was, he's got a thousand books. I was right. like, why not? Why not? God, that's so, that's so freaking smart. Good yeah, for you. I would have been like, I give up. <laughs> right. um, wow. That's awesome. Okay. So then <laughs> you get it and you self publish. Now what, like, I love the intention. Are you bringing it to classrooms? Are yes, you? Yeah. Yes. And how is it received? Very well. Ugh. And that's like my main thing. It was never to make money. And you really don't make a lot of it's money. It's hard to make money it's publishing to, on Amazon, isn't it? Right. It's hard to make money. You don't make very much. That wasn't even the, I didn't even care about yeah. that. It was just for my son. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when he starts a new school year, I donate them to the speech and OT therapist. Awesome. And, you know, school library, the, you know, special education teacher, general ed teacher. I'm just donating books left and right. And they are reading them and the message is getting out. You're doing it. Hey, busy moms and aspiring entrepreneurs. If you've got a business dream on your heart, but only 20 hours a week or less to make it happen, I'm here for you. I'm Betsy, a busy mom of four and a business coach obsessed with helping women just like you build thriving businesses that fit your life, not the other way around. After 20 years in marketing and building my own nonprofit and e-commerce business and a successful podcast, I know exactly what it takes to go from overwhelmed to empowered. That's why I've created my self-paced digital courses designed to help you move forward with clarity and confidence. Whether you're starting from scratch or recalibrating an existing business, my courses will take you from stuck and overwhelmed to simplified, organized, and confident in your next steps. And most importantly, confident in yourself. With titles like building a business around balance and joy, slay imposter syndrome and show up, marketing made easy, empowering success with Grow Math financial planning and overcoming overwhelm and keep going, you'll get simple, sharp, tested strategies that work. Each course is just $79 or save $100 and grab all five for $2.95. Every course is a video with slides by me, plus free worksheets to guide you through. Learn on your own time, at your own pace, and in the privacy of your own home. Let's make your business dream a reality, even if you only have a few hours a week. Visit writeyourownstory.co backslash FFA courses, or click the link in the show notes below. Ladies, it's time to step into your power, make your money, and build the life you've been dreaming of. And I can't wait to help you get there. Again, visit writeyourownstory.co backslash FFA courses, or click the link in the show notes below. Okay. Let's quickly, for all of those who are listening, first of all, you all need to go buy the book, but let's talk about some of the pieces of the book so that they can understand what kind of things are in there. So you go through, um, and first of all, the illustrations are really adorable and beautiful and they really depict kids of all walks of life, which I just absolutely love. But well, that was like my only really instruction for her. Yeah. It was like, you're the artist, not me, yeah. but I want everybody represented in this book. Everybody like 
your mind run wild. Go yeah. do your thing. Anyone and she delivered. I'm telling you. She really <laughs> did. I have goosebumps yeah. again. God, it's <laughs> happening. Um, okay. So one of my like favorite parts, so it's all about, it really opens with sort of like my, yes, my child is non-speaking. And while that's somewhat true, he can still communicate. It just looks different to you. We all communicate differently. No two are the same, no matter which way you use, it's no reason to feel shame. And I just, I loved, loved, loved that. And then it goes into all sorts of like different ways that people communicate and, you know, different devices that people can use to communicate all sorts. I mean, these kids in here are just the cutest, most beautiful. And like, I love how you as the writer really outlined sort of different scenarios. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just like, I mean, I feel like I am a very empathetic person. And like, these are all things that I hadn't really, a lot of them are things I hadn't thought of yet. Yeah. And I was like, this is great. It's so informative. My kids are at their dad's uh, last night, but I was like, come home. I want you to see this. Book. <laughs> um, I just absolutely adore this. Okay. So really, truly, it sounds like bullying was... Um, and you know, I feel bad that we're talking about a three to four year old girl, but she didn't know any better, but regardless, right. what's even worse is that your son is sad because he feels mm -hmm. not accepted and he feels picked on. Right. Has that continued to be a theme in his life? You know, I don't really know. And that's the issue of him being non speaking mm. is because he can't really tell me. Yeah. So, you know, he goes to school and I'm relying on, um, his paraprofessionals mm -hmm. and they, I love them. They're great. Yeah. But you don't, you know, they don't see everything. Right. They don't hear everything. And he can't tell me. So it's really hard to yeah. know if that's continuing or not. Yeah. Um, are you able to tell his mood when he comes home from the day? He's just really tired. And yeah. He's had it. <laughs> I bet. I bet. And he I... just wants to be a kid and go outside and play. And we have our little routine that we do. Yeah. We go outside and play, take our hour long walk around the cul de sac, uh -huh. literally say hi to every neighbor. Uh huh. You know, eat snack. He does the same thing. So. Yeah. Does routine bring him a lot of comfort? Yes. Yeah. That's Very great. routine. Yeah. I love that. That routine also brings me comfort. Um, so tell me, I know you're really, really passionate about bullying and for it to stop. Mm. We had even talked about off camera that like bullying is so beyond just children. Right. And like, you know, we, my, you know, if my kids are ever bullied, <clears throat> we talk a lot about it and we're like, you know, I kind of, we have to, their behavior is not okay. And you need to stand mm -hmm. up for yourself. But like, I also have empathy because what is going on at home or in their life that is giving right. them that hurt feeling that they then feel the need to sort of project onto others. Um, what other examples of bullying have you had in your life that continue to fuel your charge against this? I think even personally, like with myself, you know, I have a lisp yeah. and I have a larger nose. Oh, I, I, I don't care. I do. That's the thing. I don't care. But like other people seem to care and they want to tell me. And it's like, you know, especially in high school and middle school, oh, people God. would, I didn't, I was very quiet and shy. Mm -hmm. And partly because every time I would talk, there'd be this one boy back there, like mocking my list. And it's like, <sighs> well, then I don't want to talk, you know, right. you're literally like taking the joy out of, yeah. um, of course, you know, I don't care anymore. But yeah. that really bothered me yeah. at that age. Oh, that's so hard. Yeah. Middle school is cruel. I mean, people just find anything. They I say know. the meanest things. And I've got two middle schoolers now. And like when I hear about the things that are said at school, I am like, my jaw is to the floor. Right. I think it's just gotten worse, unfortunately. Um, how do you feel like we can encourage our children to be kinder? I think part of it, again, with the illustrations in my book, you know, show them from a young age that mm. people are all different and yeah. that's, an, and it's not only okay, but it's awesome. You don't, and I always tell, I do author visits and when I do, yeah. I tell them like, how boring would it be if we all looked the same and acted the same and dressed in the same brands? Yeah. And I mean, right. it would just be so boring. It's like, it should be celebrated. Yeah. You know, so start from a young age and start showing them those talk about it. Yeah. Talk about what makes them unique and special. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so important. And I think for our generation of raising kids to like, really, I feel like our generation is trying to do a better job mm -hmm. of letting kids just be themselves right. and write their own story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, versus what your expectations are of them or what your hopes are for them. Like what are their hopes and dreams? Right. What makes them unique? Continue to celebrate that. Cause God, the last thing is to your point that we want is for everyone to just feel like they have to fit in versus mm -hmm. just get, be themselves. Um, okay. So um, when we talk about community and you know, we have, how do people support what, what's a good way the community can support 
families um, with kids that have disability or differences? Um, I think one thing is still include them. Yeah. Once I had a child that started having more behavior issues and mm-hmm. he needs the routines and all the stuff that comes with it. Yeah. We got less invitations to places. Yeah. You know, and that hurts as the parents. You're like, oh. you still want to be invited, even if you can't go. Yeah. Just having the invite means a lot. Gosh, just ask. Just, I mean, yeah, even if I know I can't go, it would have felt better to be invited. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's such great advice. Okay. So be inclusive. Um, how do, how have your friends and family shown up and supported you as a mom through this? Like what, what is helping? Um, you know, I have a really good friend. Shout out to Jessica. Hey, Jessica. <laughs> um, we've been friends for years and I feel like we're more like family. And yeah. she's, I mean, she's my person. Totally. You know? I've got a couple and of those. Yep. She babysits Bryson once in a while for us. It really helps out. And she's trusted. Yeah. A trusted babysitter. I know he's in great hands with her. Yes. And she lets him be his crazy little self. Yeah. You know what I mean, totally. That's amazing. Okay. So offer babysitting services. I'm sure she just listens really oh, well yeah. too. Yeah, she is. Um, how do you take care of yourself? Cause this is, I mean, you're literally writing a book, doing author visits, getting right. it published, taking care of a child that, you know, needs his routines. Right. You've got another job. Like I go to school, you go to school, <laughs> right? right? How are you taking care of yourself? I didn't for a while. Yeah. And my mental health started to tank. Mm, and totally. I, I started going to therapy and it's like, Guys, so therapy is amazing. It's like, it my be, favorite. It's my jam. I love I it. And people like, there's like, a, oh, you're going to therapy. Like, she might be crazy, you know. But it's like, oh my gosh, therapy. Everyone should go to therapy. Every it should be required. It really should. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's amazing. So therapy. I took more time to get massages. Good. Um, you just have to make time. Yes. And I, th- I think my husband told me. I think it was great that he said you can't afford. Not to, because I said, I can't, I don't, I don't think we can afford yeah, for right. me to go to therapy. Hmm. It's expensive. It he is said, expensive. you can't afford not to go. Oh, you know what I mean? I love him for that. I know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I started going to therapy, get massages and just take more time for myself to read in the yeah. hammock outside. I mean, whatever I can do. Yeah. And it uh, like, like you said, like even just like those few minutes to just unwind in the hammock or whatever, right. like it can be big, it can be small therapy. Like, doesn't it sometimes feel like you're taking like the pot off the boiling water and just like all oh, the steam comes out. Yeah. You're like, Oh my God, that's so much better. Right. Cause it's just like, I can only imagine it, Like we were talking about before, like the stress of it all. Mm-hmm. And then also the emotional component of knowing that your son isn't included and, you know, trying to be right. a step or two ahead of him, I'm sure at all times, both for his safety and his happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot, but I know that also not to discredit him and all the joy and mm-hmm. all the fun that right. he, I can totally tell mm-hmm. brings to your home and to his classroom into mm-hmm. the playground. Um, how do you talk to him about what makes him unique when it comes to celebrating his differences? Yeah. You know, I think he, he knows. Yeah. He's not, and that's another thing I just had to say. He's Please. non he's nonverbal. Yeah. But he knows what you're saying to him. Gotcha. Some people talk to him like he has no idea. Mm. He knows exactly what Almost you're like saying. Almost like he can't hear you. You're he like, can, um, yeah. He can hear you. He's not deaf. But yeah. Can, right, right. You no, know, so he sees the differences. Yeah. He can tell. Um, and I just tell him like, you are just the coolest kid. Like, yeah, pump it I up. would if I wouldn't change you. Even mm-hmm. if I could, like, I think you are awesome mm. and you are so unique and everything he does is just like, I would have never thought to look at something in that way, you know? Yeah, right. How they problem solve, how everything. Yeah. 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 I mean, he was playing with his barn. I'll never forget this. Like a little toy yeah. Fisher Price barn. Love it. And I had like a basket of animals next to it and he was probably four years old at the time or whatever. And instead of using the basket of animals, he went and t- got his little cooked Gerber ravioli, like the little. Yeah. Yeah. Toddler, totally. Uh huh. Yes. I remember he those. Used those as animals. I was like, huh? Yeah. Okay. Like, okay. That works. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, it's so awesome. He was like, these are better. Yeah. Honestly, like, honestly, ravioli barn, ravioli barn. <laughs> Right. I mean, now I want to eat a ravioli barn. Right. Oh my God. That's awesome. And it's just like to see his like creative mind processing yeah. in different ways. How does he communicate? Like what kind of tools and resources um, does he communicate with? Yeah. So he has a medical device. It's called an AAC device. Okay. It basically looks like an iPad. Uh-huh. Um, but for him, he can't type yet. He can't spell words. So he just has like pictures on it. Yeah. Like I want candy. They're all pictures. Yeah. Um, he doesn't like to use it. <laughs> really? And, yeah, he doesn't like to. That's interesting. He's like, I can yeah. communicate without he this. He knows he can use it. He's yeah. done it before. Mm-hmm. 
But I think when he's at home, it's, you know, it is tiring to get your device out, Mm -hmm. you know, type it all out. Type it all out. Yep. So he just kind of points to things. Yeah. You know, I think for breakfast today, he brought me a loaf of bread and then took my hand to the toaster and was like putting my hand on the toaster. Awesome. So he wanted toast. Yep. You know what I mean? So you can communicate, but he's not using his voice. I still knew exactly what he wanted. Absolutely. That's such a cool example. Um, How does he use this device more at school? He does more at school, I think, because he knows they don't know him as well. Yeah. Mom knows when I give her a look. I Oh, he doesn't, his socks are bothering him. You know, he gave me that look and they won't, they don't know. Yeah. Right. He's your kid. And like, it's just how, how well we know our own children. It's it's just on a different level. Okay. That's really, really interesting. Um, does he have like favorite things that he likes to do? Like, um, my friend Ashley came on the show Mm -hmm. and her son loves, um, it's, a, I forget what the name of the place is called, but it's kind of like a run, jump and play, but it's specifically, oh, we rock the spectrum. yeah, I, I was yeah. listening to that episode. Yeah. <laughs> do you, does he like, do you guys go to places like that? Where does he love to play? And... Yeah. We've never gone there. I yeah. still need to. It's on my list. Yeah. Amongst all the bajillion other things right. on your list. Give yourself grace. He loves that entertainment junction. Oh yeah. Which is going to close down. No. Yeah. Oh my God. I took, I took my kids there a million times. He loves it. He loves trains. Yeah. So he could spend forever in that place totally just he loves being outside yeah. going to the park yeah um he likes to take his stuffed animal and mm-hmm. put it down the slide so you know. cute um, um and does he like to engage with other kids at the park no not really yeah and i've seen them try and sometimes he acts like they're not even there and i'm yeah. like buddy like yeah <laughs> and then do you similar to sort of like how the book the idea for the book came are you able to go is it good to go? I don't, I'm genuine. Mm-hmm. I have no answers. I'm just asking a genuine question. Like, do you go and sort of be like, Hey, this is Bryson. He doesn't yes. speak or like, or do you talk mm-hmm. to the mom? Do you talk to the kids? Or do you just kind of let it all play out and let kids be kids? How do you do this? Sometimes I let it play out mm-hmm. and I just kind of watch. I mean, he likes to be alone a lot of the time yeah. too. Mm-hmm. So if he's not trying to engage, then he really might not want to engage. Totally. He's just sometimes, doing his thing. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes I do go up and like, Hey, this is Bryson. He's non-speaking but he can still play with you. Perfect. You know, go point to the slide. He talk to him and he can, yeah, you'll follow, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. And our kids really receptive to that. Uh, most of them are. Yeah. Yeah. I know kids. Like I really do feel like it is a default for kids to be kind. Yeah. We're all born pretty kind. And, um, we just hope that life doesn't make us a little bit harder. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we were at the park, uh, one day and he was playing with like a 10 year old boy. So a pretty big age gap. Yeah. They were playing together and this 10 year old boy was trying to show him how to ride on that, like hang glider thing. Like oh yeah. Old, mm-hmm. Whatever. Zip liney kind of thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, Bryson couldn't do it. He has oh, right. low muscle tone uh-huh. and all that stuff. And this kid came up to me and he said, Hey, is your son autistic? And I was like, yeah. How'd you know? Yeah. Like, how did you know you're 10? You know, you're right. 10. Right. I'm thinking he probably has a family member or something. Right. And he said, Oh, I could just tell I, you know, there's people in my class that are autistic and yeah. they remind me of him. Yeah. And then he continued to play with them. I was like, okay, like. Awesome. But yeah, it was really cool. That is that his, really- the, the awareness of a child that young to recognize it and then be like, cool, like cool. no problem. That's what I love. My kids are in public school um, as well. And like, I just love that it really does expose them to mm-hmm. more, more things just right. in general, but like that it's just totally normal yeah, for all sorts of different kids to, and like, you know, everyone's in like a little small group and gets pulled out for this and that. Mm -hmm. So like even my daughter who's dyslexic, who like needs all sorts of reading intervention. I mean, she is as smart as it gets, but school's really hard and she does a great job, but because she's so supported at school, but it is so normalized for her and different kids to just be like pulled in out of here, go Mm -hmm. over there. Like, you know, I feel like it's not as stigmatized as it was. Right. When we were kids, where I'd be like, who's different? You're like, not singled out because no. everyone's kind of coming and going. Yeah, totally. Right. Which I, I think school has done like an awesome, awesome job of that. Um, okay. Any other thoughts about like how to be a supportive community member, how to, you know, encourage our kids to be kind, how to be a kind parent ourselves? I think to be a supportive community member, I see a, this has happened to me so many times where Bryson has a meltdown. Yeah. And you have to remember it's, you know, a lot of sensory stuff that mm. we don't even like recognize. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he's taking it all in and it gets overwhelming. And as his mom, I know what the issue is, but yeah. other people don't. And yeah. So they see me like 
my kid is flipping out at the park and mm-hmm. they're, you know, the parents give you those looks like, mm-hmm. and it's like, maybe instead of looking, how about we just go help? Yeah. How about we just get up and say, can I give you a hand? Can I carry that diaper bag for you to the car? Can oh. I push the stroller for you back? Can I pick up all these toys he's checked everywhere? You yep. know, let's do that instead. That happened to me one time and I will never forget that lady. She didn't ask questions. She didn't give me look. She just said, let me help you. And it was just like, I never will forget that. I'm going to cry. Yeah. It's, That's, yeah. it's just the little thing, but like what a huge gesture. Everyone's staring and she's just like, let me help instead of look. <laughs> yeah. And you know, someone else watched that and they're like, mm-hmm. you know what? Next time I'm going to offer to help Yeah, or like, I'm just going to, or I'm just going to be kinder or more accepting. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Oh, bless that woman. Even if your kid doesn't have a disability, I mean, kids throw tantrums. Everyone's oh, carried their kid like a stack of potatoes out of the park. Yep. Out of Target. Out all of four Target, of them. Yep. And you didn't buy anything. You're just dragging the kids out. Yep. I mean, full cart had, yeah. to, had to leave it. Yep. Cause yeah. the kids, I was like, well, this isn't good. We're not going to make it. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I remember I used to just like literally, I would have to time it, especially with the twins. Um, cause I was like, I have two meltdowns potentially, <laughs> um, where it was like, okay, I have to like, especially in target. Cause you know, you just like want to wander and buy everything yeah. or just look at everything and like get, get ideas for DIY and all that stuff. But I'm like, I still have to make it through checkout mm-hmm. and I still have to make it through loading the car mm-hmm. and unloading the car. So like, you got to hustle, like, right. you know, it's right. not just the shopping, <laughs> uh, but yes, every parent can relate to some extent of that. Like mm-hmm. It is kind of, you do feel like everyone's looking at you. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they actually are, but you feel like it. Yeah. Right. And just to like, I love that, that just to like offer, offer a hand, yeah. especially to the mom. Cause like maybe with that overwhelm Bryson, if someone approached. I think it would have, but yeah. it didn't overwhelm me when yeah. you were picking up his toys for me. Yeah. You know, cause oh, I probably so would have had to leave him like, cause he was. Right. Just truly Autism flipping out. Meltdowns are different. Yeah. I feel like they really are. Oh, tell me more. And they're he's just so strong and it's hard like physically for me. I can only imagine control him. I mean, he's only six, but I think about that. What happens when he's 15 and Mm -hmm. he's having, I won't be able to physically, I will need that community help. Yes. You need people to step in at that point. Like how do you, so like, let's talk more about how they're different and how you settle him down for any, I'm sure there's people listening who have um, autistic Mm -hmm. children as well. Let's share tips. Yeah. I mean, what are we doing? I think, they're all different, right? Right, and what, for sure. Right, but like for Bryson, sometimes if you go, you know, we took him to the water park. It's it's too much. So sensory. Kids are so sensory, and mm-hmm. I I think as a parent, you have to realize like they're not being bad. Yeah, they can't help it. Like they're just so overwhelmed. They're just so overwhelmed, and you just need to get them out of that place. It's not the right time for them. Don't try to push it. Yeah, it's not the right time. Try again next week, and maybe it'll yeah. be different. Yeah. Try again a slower time of day. You know what I yeah, mean? So that's smart. Just listening to them. They're not trying to, they're not being bad. Right. They're they just can't. literally, I, I mean, we all know that feeling as a human to feel so overwhelmed oh, yeah. and be like, I, I don't know how to put one foot in front of the other at the moment. And I can't imagine being a little person and being yeah. like, I can't, you know, like you're still learning your own feelings mm-hmm. and how, and you know, communication is different. He can't communicate. Mm-hmm. It's too loud, mom. I need to leave. Like mm-hmm. my husband plays music and I'm trying to cook dinner. I think last week I was like, it is too like, just turn it off. Turn, turn it off. off. Right. Please. Like I love Luke Combs too. Yeah. Just turn it off. Please like, turn it off. I can't handle <laughs> another did, sound. But I can communicate that to him. Yeah. Bryson can't do that all the time. Yeah. A hundred percent. So I have to kind of fill in and be like, you know, we just need to leave. And yeah. And he usually calms down when we're out of that area. Yeah. Um, can you sense like, um, I always joke with, with my kids. I'm like, Ooh, storm's brewing. Like yeah, you can feel the right. energy shift and you're like, yeah. it's, we got to go. It's come. Something's yeah. coming. <laughs> I just like, um, do you get that kind of sensation where like, you're like, Ooh, I can kind of tell that this is starting to overwhelm him. Yeah. Or is it just kind of like, I, um, for someone who doesn't have an autistic kid, or is it like a snap, like, Oh gosh, we just like went over the edge and I didn't see it coming. Kind I think of thing. we've done both, but I mean, most of the time I've known <laughs> these pretty, kids in their range, I, all yeah, of them, right? I know him pretty well at this yeah. point. To, I know what he can yeah. tolerate and what he just can't right now. And maybe he can in the future. Yeah. And that's another tip I want to give a Please. lot of people with special needs, children, especially autism. They are afraid to take them out to those water parks and they're afraid to take them to the zoo mm. and the noisy train place. And, because they do act like that a lot and they're nervous about the looks that they get. Yeah. And so they tend to stay home. Mm -mm. Um, And my, 
I, I understand that. Right? Yeah, sure. But from a young age, we have taken Bryson to these places and it doesn't always work out. Yeah. Sometimes you pay admission to the zoo and you're, you have to leave and you lost your money Ugh. and you have to just deal with it. But yeah. guess what? Now he loves the zoo. Hmm. Now he loves the train place because we've taken him and we've tried and tried over and over again. I love and that. And it, it worked. And I, other, I think other families don't get that either. Like if you have a neurotypical child, mm -hmm. you just show up to the zoo and they have a great time. Yeah. It's not always that way with special needs families. I to I've never thought about it that way, but that is so eye-opening. And to think that you've packed the diaper bag, you've yeah. packed the snacks, you've driven all the way to the zoo, you've paid admission. Mm -hmm. But like you said, long-term, no matter what, this is worth it. It helps long-term. Yeah. And he loves, I mean- going to all places, most places, and I'm saying sure. all, yeah. most places now he can tolerate because we've been trying and we try and we try. Yeah. I stopped buying admission. I just bought passes. Oh, smart. Sometimes you just jump in. I'm just buying a pass. Right. Now we have to go. Because yeah, we, you know, totally. Now we have to keep trying. <laughs> That's so smart because man, admission is yeah. brutal. Okay. I love that advice. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Gosh, I have a million. I think we've done a great job of talking about what life is like for you guys mm -hmm. and what I love that, like, you know, you've done a great picture of explaining sort of what it's like at home and what it's like out in public and what is so great and what helps and, you know, how community members can be supportive. Is there anything else that you want to talk about? Because I know bullying is so important to you. I mean, we see it amongst adults. You were even yeah. saying that, like, you had this amazing news segment and people in the comments were coming at you. Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was interviewed for, I think, Local 12. Again, mom brain, no idea. That's all good. <laughs> no, no idea. <laughs> no one's judging you. We've all got it. Right. And some people in the comments were just, oh, her lisp is so annoying. I just can't listen. And it's like, you're an adult. You we know what I mean? grown people. We're grown. You don't have to listen to it. Just scroll. Just scroll. And like to take the time yeah. to actually comment. Yeah. And there I, are people on the other end of that screen that see what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, it's such a disappointment. Yeah. Genuinely. So I think that like, I think, I know people in our generation, um, you're much younger than I am, but <laughs> have not really been taught how to regulate their emotions. Mm -hmm because I don't feel like our parents ever really knew how to either. Like, you know, that's why there were a lot of like stern parents and, yeah. you know, they love us like crazy. But like, I think I'm finding so many of us as adults are learning how to regulate our own emotions while we're also raising children, mm -hmm. teaching them how to regulate their emotions. But like, I think that it's just a, a good lesson for community to take a step back and think about how you show up as a community member in general, how you manage whatever uncomfortable feelings you have inside mm -hmm. you. Is that something that you work through personally or are you taking it out on other people? And I think, right. you know, just to like, for everyone to slow down for a little bit and just kind of like self-reflect on like, how are we doing? Are we being a good human? Yeah. And like, I mean, gosh, it's less about, I feel like, you know, we're all so focused on how much can I get done? What results can I get? And, you know, and I get it, that is the world, you know, but to slow down and like, I really, in this chapter of my life, what is truly saved my life has been focusing on how I want to feel each day. Mm -hmm. And that's on me and life yeah. happens. And there are some days you swing and miss, just like some days you go to the zoo and you swing and miss, mm -hmm. like, and you got to turn around and go home. And I'm, I can't tell you how many times I've been like, tomorrow is a new day. Yeah. Um, but I do really try and focus my thoughts in the morning around how do I want to feel today? How, and like with that, I also take the time to reflect, to be like, Am I showing up in the way that feels like I'm actually contributing? Yeah. You know, am I being kind to my kids? Am I being a supportive community member? Like, I don't know. And I just wish that people, you know, just kind of like took the time to self-reflect instead of hopping online and trolling people I about know. this amazing interview that you wrote a book to support your child. They weren't the only comment and it's just, it's disheartening, you know? <laughs> it is. It really is. Oh, I'm sorry that you experienced that. But like point being, everyone be nicer. Yeah. Be nicer to your kids so that they can be nicer. Be nicer to yourself so that you can be nicer. You know, just on that point, I try to be nicer to myself all the time. Yeah. I'm constantly checking myself. Mm -hmm. I was at work yesterday mm -hmm. listening to your podcast. I'm a, I am a listener of your podcast. Thank it's you. kind of cool that I'm here. Uh, that's awesome. Um, but I was listening to your podcast and, you know, you had, like, we were talking about, like, the CEO of the Ronald McDonald House and you have people who started nonprofits and all this stuff. And I'm like at work and I clean houses for a living. That's, yeah. 
I'm in, you know, I'm in college, but that's my job right now. Yeah. That's how you're making and your money. That's how I make my money. And I'm wearing gym shoes, shorts, and a shirt with bleach on it. And I'm <laughs> listening to your podcast. And I'm like, Oh, I'm supposed to be there tomorrow. Yes. You like are. I'm, and I was like, I'm not worthy enough to sit on her couch when she has CEOs here and I clean houses. And I was like, and then I was like, Whoa, where'd that come from? Because Where? that's not how I feel good. Like, and I was like, no, you are a hundred percent. Your job does not define you define you that's what you do to make money yeah it doesn't define i don't care who what you do neither do i to be clear your story matters just as much as everyone else's and like i love that you said i can't remember if you're recording or not but you're like i'm an avid podcast listener but i've never done this before look Mm -hmm. at you like you're sitting on a podcast now like i mean talking about the book that you wrote that you started your own publishing company to self-publish that is carried in amazon barnes and noble Walmart. And also you're like a really loving, wonderful mom and community member. So like, yeah, sit down. You want to be on a podcast too? I think I literally, I sent you a message. I said, I think you would be, I would like to be on your show. And you said, okay. Yeah. If you don't ask, the answer is no. Right. You have to ask. You have to ask. And sometimes you'll be like, oh, all right. Yeah. And if you said yes, that means I am worthy to be on this couch. Yes. You know what I mean? Like everybody else. Yes. You, first of all, you're so, born. I like love the notion. I've, I've just been discovered. I've really been reading about the difference between self-confidence and self-worth. Mm-hmm. And I, um, you have to read this book called, or listen to this book called, I listened to it, um, called Worthy. Okay. And it was so interesting. And it all is about that negative self-talk, which yeah. you were, I'm so glad you said that out loud. Thank you for saying that out loud. First of all, thank you for fixing your thoughts because yeah. <laughs> you deserve every single second quick- on Thoughts, yeah, just a but, quick rewrite. But like, I think yeah. every person suffers from that. Mm-hmm, Absolutely. And for us all to just say that out loud to be like, no, I need to like choose again and again and again. But this concept of the book was like, you were born worthy. Yeah. That's just it. Just for being here. Mm-hmm. You are you're worthy. There's no levels of worth. Mm-hmm. I mean. No, that everyone is worthy of love and respect and kindness yeah, exactly. and acceptance. I just had to check myself yesterday and I was like, you know what? I'm going to bring that up. I'm so glad I don't you care. did. I don't have a filter. I throw it on the table. Yes. That is the way to live life unfiltered yeah. and yeah. kind, but unfiltered. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I freaking love that. And I think a lot of, I find a lot of stay at home moms kind of feeling like, well, I can't start a business or I can't do this. Cause I just stay home. I'm like, just stay home. That's right. the hardest job yeah. ever. Um, and you know, and they have so many skills and they're bright and, I just, to your point, it doesn't matter where you are in life or what you like, quote unquote, do you're worthy. That's just what you do to make money. I mean, that's literally the smallest part of you. Totally. Right. That is literally just the tiniest part of you. Yeah. I love that. That is so, 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 so good. Is there anything better than when someone asks you where you got something and you're like, Amazon, can you believe it? Uh, It's like when someone says, oh, I love your dress and you get to be like, it has pockets. I love Amazon because I can experiment with trends and activewear and fashion, beauty, and anything else I really want without having to break the bank. If you're like me and you get a little bit sad, okay, maybe more than a little bit sad when there's no package at the door, then you are my people. Also, I think we might need help. But until then, visit amazon.com backslash shop backslash write your own story co or click the link in the show notes to shop all my faves in fashion, beauty, home decor, organization, and more. These are treasures you're not going to want to miss. Okay. What are your hopes and dreams for women? I wrote. Yeah. I let's read. Let's read. Let's, let's get in there. Hopes and dreams oh, for good. women. And look. not to brag, but we're doing great on time. Oh, we're going to land this plane. This has good. been, so, I, I just, this has been so lovely. Okay. Hopes and dreams um, for women. Let it rip. Also okay. everyone, she's using gel pens and they're multicolored and I just love her for it. I have the page before this was like, mow the lawn. It was like, go to the cr- go go to Kroger. Kroger. Like, yeah, totally. Flip the page. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, and now I'm on a podcast. Right. Yeah. This so. is a very, has a lot of things in here. Yep. But okay. I wrote down this quote and I literally live by this. It says, feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm. You know, I have a fear of, yeah, I'm still getting over that fear of people making fun of my lisp and yeah. you're talking on podcasts. You're t- people hear that. That's what they're hearing. Mm-hmm. And I just, I'm working through that mm-hmm. and feel the fear, but then just do it. I love that. I had a fear of doing my first author visit. Yeah. I didn't know what to say. I was, you know, yeah. and I just did it anyway. And 
the next time I do it, it'll be a little easier. Mm -hmm. And the next time it'll be easier than that, you know, and you just practice. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah. First of all, if anyone says anything about your lisp on this show, you, you send them to me. Oh, I don't even care. I don't know what I'm going to, I know you don't, <laughs> yeah, but I'm, like, I'm right. mad. I am like, right. I'm mama bear. I'm like, don't you dare. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Do it anyway. What do we think women are afraid of? Being judged by other women, honestly. Yeah, yeah totally. It's normally woman to woman. It, I know. I think we're getting better. Yeah, we are. But that doesn't mean that that innate fear isn't still absolutely at surface level, don't right. you think? Right. I love that. I want to add that to like my quote board to feel the fear. I know. The, yeah. I wanted to get tattooed on me. My other I know. Arm, you know? Yep. <laughs> I know. Same. I know. I need one for my other arm too. I feel the same way. I mean, don't, I was terrified doing my first yeah, podcast. I bet. Um, and then I teach business courses and every time I go to promote those, like it's so easy for me to sit here on this couch and help you tell your story. Mm -hmm. But when it's my turn to talk about myself, I still yeah. I find I sit in fear and I'm like, all that imposter syndrome, icky, like the thoughts that we were talking about to be like, how are you smart enough? Or like, I'm like, wait a minute. I am super smart. I've done a ton of yeah. research. I have worked my ass off, you know, like just like everybody else, we're mm -hmm. all, I'm like, just get on the line or make your video or put your course out fear, fill the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, I know that the CMO of Ronald McDonald house still gets scared about stuff. Like we all do, Yeah. but keep going. Just try. And what a great example to set for our kids. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And another good example. Yes. Let's get back to the notes. <laughs> Bring it back, to, it back notes. to the notes. Okay. So I'm going to graduate in January. <gasps> Fine. I'll be, 20, I mean, I'll be 28 years old and I, it would have taken me five years to get an associate's. Five years to get an associate's degree. Yeah. So I had my son. I did things out of order. Yep. Can't see my hands. If, yeah. It's a podcast. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, just the time will pass anyway. That's what yeah. I want to say. Yeah. So I, I hear all the time people are like, I don't have time. Mm. I don't have time or it's going to take too long. They say it's going to take too long to write a book. It's going to take too long to go back to school. I'm a mom. It's, it will take me forever to finish a degree. The time will pass anyway. <gasps> and from five, five years ago, if I would have kept saying that for five years, I'd be in the same spot, but you know, I said, I don't care. And it took me five years to get a two year degree. Yeah. It's a lot of money spent, but yeah, I don't, that's okay. That's yeah, okay. Right. Okay. But you know what? The time passed and I'm five, you know, I'm in a different spot. God. I don't even know if I'm making sense. You're I'm making like <laughs> so much sense. My jaw is to the floor. And I'm like, I, I'm going to think about that for the rest of the day. Yeah. That is so profound. Whether you do the thing today or not, Time won't stop. Right. Time's not waiting so you for might you. as well do it even if it takes you a hundred years to do it. Right. And that, like, don't you also feel that like you are investing in yourself and that yeah. is so important? Who yeah. cares if you're doing it out of order, right. if you're doing it at your own pace? Like yeah. this is your life. This is one of the big, I was like, I will die marching for this. Yeah. That like, we all have to put down the shoulds. I should be able to do an associate's degree in two years. Yeah. I should, I don't know, whatever order you thought right. you should do it. Fuck it. It's your life. Right. You <laughs> write your own story and you get to do it however you want to, however you're able to. But the fact is, is that you're showing up for your life anyway and doing yeah. the things that are important to you. And there's no timeline. No. People, there's a society timeline, but right. like, there's really no timeline. You and know? like, says who? Yeah, says who? Like, says who, right? Um, congratulations. Do you want a cookie? You did it right. in two years. It took there... me five. We did the same thing. And it just I, took longer. It took longer. And I felt like I followed like the shoulds and the timelines mm -hmm. and my life still completely fell apart. And I did not get a cookie. Right. <laughs> right. And so now when I come up for air, I'm like, fuck it. I'm doing it my way. Yeah. You know, I don't know for better or for worse, but right. I'm happy. Are you happy? Yes, I am. Mm. And I will be 10 times prouder yeah. than the 20 year olds walking. You know, I'll have yep. my seven year old son at the time yeah. with me and I graduate and maybe it's a little late. Says who? Says who? You got the degree. I think it's a great time. I, I think do. I did it on perfect time. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just check the time. Now is the perfect time. Yeah. Oh, I right. absolutely love that. Oh, okay. Well, I know I need to let you go because you've got to go pick yeah. up for school, but I am so grateful that you reached out and I can't tell you how impressed I am with you as a human, as a mom and how driven you are to write your own book 
to have such intent and purpose behind it, to be such an advocate for your son and for everyone else in the community, and to also be brave enough to talk about bullying and how you've been picked on and to set a better example for people. It's like, I could go on and on and on, oh, but thank you. <laughs> this truly has been such an enriching conversation and such an important one to have. So I'm so grateful. Um, so I think, you know, when I think about how to wrap this up, everyone be kind, mm -hmm. celebrate your own uniqueness and everyone else's be a helper, yeah. lend a hand. Yeah. Um, and do it your way. Yeah. I love that. Sounds good. Okay. You guys, everyone needs to go get this adorable book and read it to your children. Um, communication is more than words. And you know what I was thinking about too, is like some of my kids are older, mm -hmm. but I want them to go, like they can do, um, class visits to younger kids oh, in the classroom. Yeah. So I was like, I want them to read it. And then I want yeah. them to go read it to younger kids. Um, I think that that would be really, really awesome. Like, even if you don't have a kid that's non speaking, yeah. this book is still relevant. Like oh, just absolutely. the illustrations alone. Yeah. I know I have to go, but I'll make it quick. No, please. I was, <laughs> I'll keep you forever. <laughs> no, I'll keep it really quick. No, please. I was please reading this take book your time. to my friend, Jessica, that I was talking about yeah. earlier. Her bestie daughter. Jessica. Yeah. Bestie Jessica. Mm -hmm. I was talking, well, reading this book to her four-year-old daughter. Yeah. And she pointed out a picture in the book where the person had either a prosthetic arm or yeah. a prosthetic leg. I forget which it's picture arm. it was. Oh, okay. Oh, there's, well, there's two, cool. but I don't remember which page. Yeah. And she said, Kaylin, what's that? And I'm like, this is what I want. Yes. Hands clapping. Yes. Hands Ask clapping. Ask the questions at home. And then I told her, isn't that cool that we have medical devices that can give somebody a limb when they weren't either born with one, they had an accident. Right. Put in your reason, whatever. Yeah. Isn't that so cool? And she's like, that is cool. Ugh. And it's like, now next time she sees somebody, mm -hmm. she would have heard about it. And it's not weird anymore. No. And, and like, that's why you don't even have to have a nonverbal kid. No. To have my book. And this is it. like, it's just spread so much understanding for, and it like makes you think about how you communicate your own way. Yeah. Like, even if we are given the gift of words, yeah, I love that. And then she's going to go up to some person with a prosthetic arm and be like, that's cool. Yeah. And this kid who I has a prosthetic arm. I had one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so jealous. Like, you know, and then this kid is going to be like, oh, I feel good about myself yeah, today. Exactly. Ugh, sprinkling the goodness everywhere. And I truly believe in the ripple effect of the world. Yeah. So everyone go get this book. It's called communication is more than words. I will link everything in the show notes, but this queen got it distributed mm -hmm. on Amazon walmart and barnes and noble all online which yep. the, i mean i know we're all shopping online anyway right so please go pick up copies donate it to your school read it to your children leave it at the park for people to go yeah. like just any and the cute little library things yep, in neighborhoods I do yeah i do that i put them in all the libraries <laughs> yeah i love that i want to get one of those for my street um anyway so please everyone go buy the book go support her i want i can't wait till you write your next book when you do will you please come back yes okay. i would love to <laughs> okay good i can't wait i'll save the spot on the couch for you <laughs> thank you oh you guys this has just been so lovely please listen and share because this is such an important message go buy the book and um be kinder to yourself, be kinder to your community and do things your way. Oh, this has been the best. Kayla, you're amazing. <laughs> Thank All right. you. Thank you everyone for listening and we will definitely catch you next time. Well, that's the end of this episode, but promise me you won't stop here with whatever it is you're feeling or dreaming about. I hope you leave today feeling empowered to live life just as you see fit. If this podcast was helpful to you, it would mean the world to me if you could leave a review on whatever platform you're listening on. I genuinely just want to help women live the life they dream about. So if this type of content tracks with you, subscribe to this podcast or visit our website, writeyourownstory.co to download digital courses or to grab a journal and a mug to just dream in and dream with. It's your life, lady. Do you. And just remember, I'm rooting for you and you've totally got this.